Hello, I'm Ned Downey. I want to tell you about when I was blasted in the mine. I got a job working at the mine called the Syndicate Mine. It was a little mine up the east side of Santa Quinn. We used to ride horses up and back from work. I was just about 17 years old by now. My job up at the mine I made $10.20 a day. There were four of us working there. There was me and three other men. I worked there for a while and on July 6, 1949. We were all working back in the tunnel. The miner had the round drilled out and was lighting the fuses. The holes were all loaded with dynamite. I was back a little ways in the tunnel at what we called a switch. I got a car of muck they loaded up to push out of the mine. You push them out by hand in a little iron coal car. I remember I just got out on the track and I looked back and I noticed that the miner's light had burned out. His carbide light had went out and he looked back and hollered bring me a light quick. So I turned and walked back into the face they called it. I walked past one of my buddies that was kneeling down fixing his light. I walked up and took the light off my hat. It was a carbide light with a flame on. I handed it to the miner and that was the last thing I ever saw in my life. Just at that minute there was a great explosion one of the holes went off. I felt myself just flying down the tunnel. I landed on my stomach and was dazed quite a bit. There was a lot of smoke and powder gas and dust. I thought sure that was the end. I knew what happened. I started to get up. When I got on my hands and knees I was just waiting for the other nine holes to explode. Which if they had done, they were all lit, would have completely covered me and buried us all alive. When I got up I must have bumped my head on the side of the tunnel. It was all rock. I felt my face. My face was swollen and blood was running down in a stream. My shirt was blown off from my waist up. My hard hat was blown to bits. And I was bleeding all over. I felt around to see if I was still all in one piece. There were no lights in there all the lights had been blown out. Then I heard one of the other men scuffing and scurrying around a little bit and we got talking and he said who's that? And I said it's Ned he said how bad are you hurt? Where did it hit you? And I said right in the face. Then another fellow, the other fellow got up and said we better get up and get around a turn because the rest of them's lit and she gonna blow up more. So we hurried around down the tunnel a ways and found a turn where I leaned up against the wall and stood there for a minute or two. Then I heard the other shots going off one right after the other in rotation, loud explosions. Nothing shot by me because I was protected by the bend no rocks could hit me there. After nine more holes went off the one man was still in there. The other three of us got together and started to walk out of there. I was walking first. I came to where I had these two cars, railroad cars or mine cars. We were all standing there and I thought there was only one so I started to push the car and I couldn't. It was too hard to push. They're loaded with about a ton of rock. So I walked around the car, with no lights to see, I slid around the edges of it. Then I started to make my way down the tunnel to safety. I wanted to try to get outside before the man outside left and went off the mountain. The boss was outside. Then this friend of mine took a hold of the other mine car and started to push it down the drift. He knew there were two cars there and he began to push and I heard the car rolling down the tunnel. I just held my breath and stood up against the wall. I hoped it was a wide enough spot because I knew he couldn't see me because there was no light, and if he would have run over me it would have been just too bad for me. He went on out of the tunnel. Then Farrell Wall this other friend of mine, he caught up with me and we took hold of hands and kinda of felt our way down the side of the tunnel. We walked out approximately 2,000 feet, out to the entrance. When we got outside the boss was coming in with new lights. He seen how bad we was hurt. Then he told a couple of young boys that was up on the mountain at the time. He said take these men over to the cabin. They had a little cabin there on the dump. They took us over in the cabin, and he ran in to find the other fellow that was still in there. He found him walking part way out. He was hurt quite bad. Then they got the jeep ready that they had up on the mountain, put a mattress in the back of it and we all crawled into the back of the jeep. We did try to wash some of the blood off of our faces. As quick as I got outside though I could feel the sunshine but everything was totally black. I knew I was blind at that time. I didn't know if it was permanent or not but I knew that it hit me right in the face. My eyes were full of rocks and I knew that it was pretty bad. So we got in the jeep and we rode down off the mountain. In the meantime the other fellow got on his horse and rode off to get help down off the mountain. He almost ran his horse to death. He rode it full speed down off the mountain and across the valley and down into town. He had his head cut bad. Later some of the people that were working down off some of the foothills said that they saw him coming across the foothills. The horse he was riding was an old white horse called Tony. He was laying right straight across the horse's back and they could see a stream of red blood running down the horse's shoulder. They said he was whipping the horse with a little stick hollering don't die on me now Tony, don't die on me. He raced through town and went up to his place and got his car. Then he went for the doctor. 
In the meantime the jeep had to go real slow off the mountain. Then we got down on the highway. The Payson Highway was about 6 miles away. We headed for the Payson Hospital and by the time we got to Payson we had decided to go right on over to Provo to the bigger hospital because they would have bigger physicalites. This was about another 25 minutes away, so we rode right over to Provo. I was conscious all the time and was feeling pretty sick. Every once in a while I would raise up and spit, the blood was choking me. It was running down inside my throat. My lips and tongue were all full of rocks where they went inside my mouth. When we got over to the hospital I got out of the jeep, took about two steps and just about fell down. My mother and the other guy had all gotten here by then. They took us to the hospital where I lay pretty sick for about 32 days. 